Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I am back to working in my concertina accordion journal, but I'm actually starting where I left off last week, and that was with a decision to take on what I should do with the last page that I added to it, because I discovered that it was bigger than the others. And I think that was simply because I hadn't torn back the collage pieces enough uh, when I was laying that down. So some of you came up with some great ideas as how I could deal with this, including making this the cover. However, I've decided that I will just cut it down and uh, yeah, get it back to the kind of size that it should be. Don't ask me why I, I, I felt I had to do it that way, but it just seemed like the thing to do. So I'm just showing you, because I did say I would show you how I was doing that. So I mean, basically, just taking a pair of scissors, cutting it down, and then all I will do is edge the page with gold. You'll see that I took an initial piece off to begin with, because I didn't want to cut it too far back, and then discover I'd gone too far the other way. So I then just sliced another little bit of it. And uh, yeah, I feel kind of happier at that. So you'll see me in a moment just putting the, the kind of gold paint around it. And that kind of gives it more of that kind of rough looking edge again. Now, if you've been following all these, you'll have heard me say that I've been trying to kind of keep two pages in a kind of similar colour theme each week. So I think there was two that was a kind of green, two more a, a blue, two... Uh, I can't remember. This last one was kind of almost autumnal colours. Well, I deviated from that this week and I deviated from it quite significantly. And I would like your view on this because the page turns out very different to everything else in the journal so far. That said, I like the page, but it's just different. So I'm going to take you through how I created it. There's a bit more actual kind of painting involved this week. So I'll take you through how I've created it. And then I have a question for you that I'd, I'd like your kind of help on. So I'm basically starting in the same place as usual. I've got that piece of scrapbooking paper that I'm just going to thicken up by adding some painted paper to. And someone asked me about why I was using this and not just using thicker card to begin with. It's pure and simply because I want to use up the scrapbooking paper. I don't know why I bought it. Uh, I think I'd used a couple of sheets from the pack, but other designs, I this one's not too bad. I could imagine using a little bit of it, but a lot of the designs in it I just wouldn't use. So I just felt, you know, this way they're not going to just sit around gathering dust. If I had someone close by that I could give them to, then I would, but, you know, I can't think of anyone. So this week, I'm not going to make the same mistake as last week. I'm trimming that back right away. And the colour that goes on here, actually, you know, from this collage paper, actually led me on to doing something different this week. It's one of these things where, I don't know, the colour just struck me as a potential background which led me on to thinking about something else and that might become a bit clearer as we go on. My kind of thought process might become a bit clearer as I go on. As usual I'm just trying to get all the excess glue, the matte medium, out of there just to make sure that that's fully adhered. Now usually I'm putting on more layers than this but this week I've decided to add another little bit of collage but not quite so much because I did want this week to be adding some paint. I'll still add ink as usual but it dawned on me that I've not really added, I don't think anyway, other than the gold paint round the edges, I've really not used any paint and I thought this week would be good to add some paint. And that also led me on to doing something 
a bit different. So I just added those kind of three pieces of collage there and I'm going to do the exact same on this side. As is sometimes the case, I get distracted when there's words on a page and I stop to look at it and you'll know that I love kind of found words and usually to put them together into a kind of little saying or whatever. But today I just thought it was really quite funny what came up on this page. So, fripe, rag, scrap of cloth, etc. And I thought, well, you know, scraps of paper. It just seemed so fitting. So, yeah, just putting my three little bits on here as well. So, in a moment, I will give it a very quick dry. I'm not drying it all the way through, but it's just to kind of get as much of the surface dry as possible. And then I'm going to add my inks as I usually do. I thought I had a Payne's grey ink but if I do I couldn't find it so I'm just taking some Mars black and some indigo. I'm not going to mix them together other than kind of mixing them on the page. So I try not to put too much down. I think some weeks I've put quite a bit down. Try a little bit less this week and I'll just give them a spray and then I'll start to to spread it out. I just want to make sure it's all covered. And I will then dry it and of course drying it starts to lighten it a bit. And this is where I started to see this as a kind of, well actually it was before that with the first piece of collage, the kind of grey, I started to see it as a background that you sometimes see in kind of still life paintings and that's why I didn't go down the, the road of going for those autumnal colours. I thought I'll try and bring that in a bit more by adding the kind of black and the indigo. Uh, yeah and that just took me in a, a whole different direction this week. Uh, this might not be making sense but hopefully it'll make sense when we come to it. So that kind of grey tone in the back. And it, it got me to thinking, should I be deviating more each week and trying to create something completely different each week? Or do I try and keep each page within a theme? Now I've still tried this week to keep it within the kind of overall look in a sense, but yeah, it, it, it does go down a completely different track. So as it turns out, I'd actually been sitting waiting for something to dry earlier in the day and that something was this kind of very stylized, abstracted rose and suddenly thinking about the fact that this to me looked like a still life background, I thought, hmm, I'll put a, a rose on it. So I brought out this cadmium red deep hue and Payne's grey. And, you know, my prompt for this week was going to be about adding paint. And I've also brought out the pale olive green. Now, what I'll do next is I am going to put the video on at normal speed just so I can talk you through my process of creating this rose. It's very stylized, uh, you know, so it, it, it was just an attempt to do something different. The funny thing is, I was sitting here on Wednesday doing this, which happened to be Valentine's Day. I don't usually do anything for Valentine's and I'd had a scroll on, I don't know, Instagram or whatever and there's all these heart type things so maybe my mind started to turn to roses as well. So anyway I've put a centre bit in which will be like that very central part of a rose that hasn't quite opened yet and then I'm just putting in these very small strokes. It's just creating the impression of petals without actually drawing them in detail. I find this, you know, a relatively straightforward way to create something 
like a rose or certain other flowers. Just dabbing over it here and there, going back over the lines, and you'll see it creates that bit of uh, kind of texture in the paint. So again, that in itself starts to add a bit of depth, which I think, albeit stylized, makes it a bit more lifelike rather than it just being a totally flat painting. So, of course, I've got to decide what size I want it to be. So I'm taking it out a little bit further here and there. I don't put the kind of main bit in the centre of the rose right in the centre of my painting. It's, it's kind of off-centre. I want some dark bits left in there because you do want some dark, again, just to indicate the fact that there's darkness in between those petals. So I'm now taking the Mars Black and all I'm going to do is take the brush and go over some of the darker bits in between the petals. And this really is just to create the depth. I've got a smaller brush this time because some of the background was more the kind of grey colour rather than the kind of, well, rather than black. So this really just creates a bit of shadow in between the petals. And, you know, I have to say I really enjoyed doing this. I've enjoyed all the pages that I've created so far. Uh, and this just seemed a little bit different. But the question I'm going to ask you, and I'll ask you this now, is... Do you think it goes with the rest of the journal sufficiently well to include it? Because it wasn't dry by the time I had to finish filming, I didn't actually attach it. And I've been thinking about this for the last few days, thinking, does it go with the rest of the journal? So my question is, should I simply put in another page for last week? Or do I include this? Because this is what came to mind on that particular day. Okay, so I think at this point I am just kind of showing you a bit of that and then I'm going to come in with another layer of paint. I noticed, I mean, I wasn't, although the paint's thick in places and other bits, it's not quite as thick and the actual grey inky background was almost absorbing some of the colour from the paint. So I do go over it again. Now you'll see that I don't necessarily go in the exact same place. I will go kind of roughly in the area, but I'll make different strokes again. And again, this will just help add depth because there'll be some bits that look a slightly different shade of the colour because it's been absorbed in. So again, just working my way around, thinking about making the petals on the outside just a little bit more defined, so putting a little bit more shape to them. So just small, quite quick strokes really. few more to the to the outside filling in a couple of the kind of black gaps and just letting those layers build on top of each other the layer underneath wasn't entirely dry but that that was that was fine that was no problem at all Okay, so just looking at it again and I now bring in the pale olive green because what I want to do is to add some leaves to it. And again, it's just very stylized, just getting, I guess, a kind of basic rose shaped leaf. I think I start with a small brush, but I think I then increase it to one that's slightly larger, if I remember rightly. 
So again, just kind of curved strokes, I guess, quite quick strokes, allowing some of the paint to sit on top of the other, so not flattening it out completely. Trying in my mind to remember what a rose leaf looks like. And, you know, if it doesn't look exactly like a rose leaf, then it doesn't matter really. I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, there was a little fleck of something there and it was bothering me. And I, there we go, got it eventually. It was tiny, but I could just see it all the time. So again, just keeping this at normal speed because I thought it was important just so you could see this since it was a bit different to what I normally have been doing on these pages. Drawing in a little bit of stem there, drawing in a little bit of a stem from the rose. I'm not looking to make it precise, it's just to give a little bit of an indication of where it is. And again, I then do a set of leaves on the other side of the stem, I think. Oh no, I'm going up the top first. I want to just put a few in, just kind of round about the actual rose flower itself. You know, so very similar strokes with the leaves as to how I actually created the rose. Yeah, just putting in another lot down below. I was kind of thinking here about some rose, I was going to say rose studies, it was quick sketches I did of roses in a, a vase a while ago and uh, I was using different materials. I tried it with different supplies, kind of five minute sketches. So I must show you those at some time, but I was thinking about trying to, to do that again. So again, I noticed that the background is kind of absorbing the green. So I will come back and add to that again. But here I am again, coming back in with the actual rose flower and putting some more paint down on that. I'm quite amazed at how much the paint kind of did seem to, the colour did seem to absorb into the background. Yeah, so here I am back on the leaves. And just adding those in. So I'm a, sorry if I'm sounding kind of a bit tired and maybe slightly disorientated a little. I have just had the first in a long time of a migraine headache and it kind of knocked me for six as we say. So yeah, so I'm just doing the editing of this the night before the video should be up and I didn't want the video to go up late although I did say to myself that if I couldn't sit and do this then I wouldn't. The very first page I did in this journal, not, not the cover but the one after that I did on the same day, I wrote Grace on that. Uh, you know it wasn't for a word for the year or anything like that but it was to remind myself to keep things in perspective and to look after myself. So yeah, after a couple of really quite hard years, I thought I need to remind myself that I need to look after me at times. And, you know, as I say today, I thought, well, if I don't get this done, it can wait a day if needs be, but I'm here, I'm getting through it, but sorry if I'm a bit kind of rambling So, titanium white now, and all I'm doing here is adding some 
little bits of white just again you know we've got the dark in there we've got the kind of colour of the rose of the leaves so now adding some light in you know just imagining some bits of light touching it you'll see on the rose itself I allow some of the red to mix in so it becomes more a kind of pinky colour I just didn't want it stark white at this stage and I was really quite liking the way that that was turning out so coming back to how I then integrate it with the other pages is simply by using the gold and using that same stencil that I've used on all the other pages. So I've got a stenciling brush here and all I'm going to do is try and stencil some gold onto this. I was trying to be careful because my paint on the rose and the leaves wasn't entirely dry so just trying to make sure that the stencil didn't go on top of it and squish it. And I think actually the gold there really enhances it. It just adds a bit more life to it as well. So this is back at double speed now rather than the, the single speed. And I think the rest of this video will now be at the double speed, although it looks like I'm working fairly slow here. Yeah, and I think that just needed the gold to lift the whole thing. Now going around the edge, I've not done the back of the card yet, but I decided that since I was waiting for this side to dry, I would just do the edging with the gold paint. And again, I think that worked really quite well. It just acts almost like a little gold frame to the piece. I decided to put a little bit on the front. I got a bit too heavy handed there and you'll see in a minute I'll, I come in with my rag just to rub it back a little bit. I wanted some there but just not quite as much as that. ended up pushing that further but you know I get there just knocking it back a little I think I put a bit of water onto just a little edge of kitchen towel just to lift some of it off a bit again I'll come in with the rag I think yeah and just kind of dab that about a bit And, you know, like in the way it looks when the light hits off it. So, giving it a bit of a dry. And I started to think here that I needed to bring in some black, almost as just a shadow around the leaves, just to make the leaves stand out that little bit more. You, you'll see there's hardly any paint on the brush there and I started to look at it and I thought no it's it's not sufficient at this point the background around the rose and the leaves actually needs to be darker so you'll see that in a moment I will actually start to add more black in and darken it up a lot more just around about the leaves and around about the the rose itself. So I didn't want the background to be entirely black but as it was everything was just looking too much the same kind of tone in a sense. It needed a bit more definition. Coming in with another layer on the flower, uh, the leaves, sorry, because again they'd kind of faded into the background a bit. I 
and I'm actually debating whether or not I put a layer of gloss medium on the top of this or a gloss varnish because I think it would actually enhance it even more. So again, just very loose strokes, not precise in any way at all. Again, coming in with some red. And this, in a sense, became more like the way I would paint normally. You know, if I'm working on something, I would build layers up, build layers up. So again, that's how it kind of deviated, in a sense, from the way I would normally put one of these concertina journal pages together. Coming back in with some more black here. Still using quite a small paintbrush here. And realising that that is helping, so starting to go around the rows as well. Don't mind if I cover up some of that gold. Spreading it out a bit with my fingers. And again, you know, I really like the way the light hits it. So I now come in with this Unipin Fine Liner Pen in 0 0.8 and a Uniposca, it's the pin type 0 0.7. And uh, just going to use these to add just some tiny little bits of detail. Now I was making sure that the paint was sufficiently dry because I've ruined lots of these kind of pens in the past by dragging them through paint that's still wet. They do not like paint that's wet. So just really going around the edges of the leaves, the black from that just stands out a little bit more than the paint itself. Tiny, tiny details. It's it's quite hard to see on camera. And just some little markings on the leaves as well. You can see it better at that angle. Doing the same on the actual rose flower. Going into those areas just to darken them even that little bit more. Now coming in with the white Posca, I just put little marks down and then I just kind of flatten them out with my finger. I don't want to do a solid line uh, that becomes too thick, so just little dots, flatten them out and, and kind of spread them a little bit, just to give the hint of light hitting the flower. And then I think I do a bit of that on the, the leaves as well. So in just a moment I will get started on the back of the card. I decided to keep it very simple. It was really just a case of adding the same colours that had gone onto this side of the card. And of course doing a bit of the, the stenciling. Just 
showing you a still shot of it there and you can see the difference between back and front so yeah just going in now with some of those colours I still had some sitting on the, the side there so yeah tell me what you think does this page go with the rest of the journal or should I keep this separate I just can't decide part of me just wants to include it because it's a page I did specifically for this concertina journal but another part of me says I'd be better doing something that is more in keeping with it so I'd be interested to know what you think I think if I do join it on then I'm not going to use the same fabric as I've used previously I, th I feel it would just jar a little bit with the darkness of this page and I think I've maybe got I may have a piece of a kind of black lace somewhere and I thought could I add that on just a tiny bit but I may be just overthinking this so you will see just building the colours up there really just using my finger to get the colours on not looking to do too much on it I'll give it a quick dry and then I'll add in the stenciling. So that is just about it for this week. If you have any ideas on other pages that you'd like to see me do in this journal, I'd also be interested to know your thoughts on that or, or any kind of supplies that you'd like to see me use on these pages. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to trying most things. If I've got the materials, I'm happy to uh, try and use them. So that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. A little bit different than the others in this series, but uh, yeah, I, en I enjoyed doing it. I'm just undecided as what I want to do with it. So... Okay, so take care everybody. Thanks ever so much for watching and uh, yeah, see you again soon. Bye for now.